what needs to happen, I guess, for Anthony Davis to join the Lakers, Brian? Well, it's not – I think what needs to happen, Rich, is he'd have to come out and say, trade me to the Lakers. And I just don't know – first off, I've spent some time with him. I don't think that's what he, where he is. I really do think he's focused on the Pelicans, and he has never given an indication that anything uh, you know, but that. And also the Pelicans have no interest in trading him right now. They're looking to uh, supplement him, trying to make trades to supplement him. That said, um, you just talked about LeBron being very, very aware of everything he does being blown up. He knew exactly what he was doing when he gave this quote. And I want to just give a little bit of context. Uh, this was to my colleague, Dave McMenamin, who he has known and is, has a very good relationship with. He gave this quote on the record, away from a media scrum. He knew exactly what he was doing, especially the fact that the Pelicans are going to be in L.A. on Friday to play the Lakers. And the reason this is so interesting, there's this very strange, really obscure rule. And that rule is that the Celtics cannot trade for Anthony Davis this season. Um, and it's, it's hard to explain, and I apologize for its complexity, but you can't have what is known in the NBA as two designated players. You can't trade for two designated players. You become a designated player based on the type of contract you sign. Kyrie Irving is a designated player. Anthony Davis is a designated player. They have Kyrie. They cannot trade for Anthony Davis. Of course, you could trade Kyrie for Anthony Davis, but that would defeat the purpose of team building. So we're not even going to go there. So, the Celtics, and the reason that's relevant is that in my mind, Rich, the Celtics have the best package they can offer if Anthony Davis becomes available uh, in, you know, next summer. If he does not sign a contract extension and forces the Pelicans' hand, just like Kawhi Leonard forced the Spurs' hand when he wouldn't sign a contract extension. So if you're the Lakers, your best-case scenario, I believe, is to try to get Anthony Davis before this trade deadline, before you have to compete with the Celtics and other teams, and potentially teams to get in the top three of the draft and whatnot uh, over the summer. And so I think that is all in LeBron's eyes. He is aware of all of that. He's definitely aware of it because he's got the same agent as Anthony Davis. And I just think he wanted to get the conversation started two months away from the trade deadline. Brian Winhorst here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so then uh, now, now let's get to the why. Uh, so LeBron has taken stock of what's in Los Angeles right now and has pegged Anthony Davis, as well as taking stock as to who others on the landscape might be um, and whether their willingness to join has already been sussed out. And he pegged Anthony Davis. Brian? Yeah, I think, Rich, I think if you look at the top three agents, I mean, one of the reasons why you would want to play with LeBron is to have the opportunity to compete and win for championships. Um, because there's a lot of challenges and downsides that come with him. The upside is if you play with him, he will have you compete. But if you look at the top three agents next summer, these guys already have championships. Kawhi Leonard and the and, and finals MVP, Kevin Durant, uh, two titles and counting, uh, Clay Thompson as he has a title. Um, it's good. I think it's going to be a hard road to hope for the Lakers in this free agent market. I think their better chance is to, try to figure out a way to trade for somebody who wants to be in L.A. Obviously, that's complicated. It's not easy. When you trade for somebody, you don't get to control the four corners. But I think ultimately, L.A. is such a draw, and LeBron is a draw, and um, you know, eventually they'll get somebody. I don't think I'm worried about that if I'm LeBron. But as point out, in 10 days, LeBron turns 34. You know, he doesn't want to do this for three years. And this is one of the things he is, he's talked about this. I mean, if you look at this roster – there's two types of players on this roster, Rich. There's veterans who are all on one-year contracts who all could be gone uh, next year to clear cap space or whatever. And there's young guys who are either auditioning to play with LeBron long-term, do you fit with him? And right now, Brandon Ingram does not. Um, or are you just being you know, fattened up to be traded <laughs> for a player like Anthony Davis? I don't think there's a... You know, he's talked about how good the chemistry is, but I don't think he's got a particular affinity for almost anyone on the roster. He knows they can all be sent out, except maybe Lonzo Ball. He really seems to be connected with Lonzo Ball. But if, if the Pelicans called and offered Anthony Davis and won Lonzo Ball, LeBron would say, have a nice career. We'll see you twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> what is LeBron hoping to achieve by pulling McMenamin over and giving him that quote? Uh, knowing that it would be run on all the platforms of the worldwide leader. I mean, what, what is he hoping to do? Just get, get Davis's attention, which obviously he could do through his agent, 
I mean, well, what what is is he shaking the tree in Los Angeles? I mean, because he also mentioned he'd love to give uh, Carmelo a whirl here. I mean, what, what do you think LeBron is hoping to achieve here? It made me smile because this is how LeBron rolls. I mean, he is going to deliver you 27, 7, and 7 every night. He's going to fill up your building. He's going to make you relevant. He's going to make you tens of millions of dollars a year in revenue. He's going to add a couple hundred million dollars to your value of your franchise. I mean, and he's going to play passive-aggressive GM. This is what he does. He's done it for a long time now. This is what he does. And, you know, I just, you know, LeBron is probably the most aware person I've ever met. Okay. His awareness of people on the court, his awareness of people in the room, his awareness of the power of his voice, he is extraordinarily aware that if the Lakers could get Lonzo Ball, doing it before this trade deadline would be the best way to do it. And he knows that Anthony, I'm sorry, not Lonzo Ball, Anthony Mm. Davis. Um, And he knows that, you know, if he talks about it, it begins the conversation. The conversation has begun. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.